Well, wouldn't you know it, we're planning to go out filming videos for the day and it is wet and miserable. And whilst I could make Dave stand under an umbrella for the whole day, we figured just whilst we're on the way to some different locations, we would uh, film a, a video just around some of the EV mist that we see on the channel. So here's Dave. He's got autopilot on. So one of the ones I see a lot is, should I charge my EV to 100%? Oh, one of the classics. Okay, the short answer is, if you have LFP batteries, and not everyone knows whether they do, but LFP batteries should once every so often be charged to 100%, but there is no need to charge it to 100% every single time. And so the answer for LFP is once in a while, yes, every single time, no. If you have an NMC battery, which is what I have, then it should be the opposite way around. It should be all of the time, no, but occasionally, yes. Now, my own personal choice, I have the NMC battery. I never, ever charge it to 100%. That's my choice. If normal course of events, I will charge it to about 70 or 75%. That's where it lives. It's quite happy. If I'm going on a journey, it'll go up to 85%. If it's a long journey, I recently went up to the lakes. I'll take it up to 95%. Never charge it to 100%. It's my choice. Next one. Will my battery need replacing after two years? Well, I certainly hope not because my car is nine years old and it is on the original battery. I bought this car at four years old. It was used and it had, I think, about 12 or 14,000 miles on the clock. So four years old. And when I bought it, it actually had an eight year warranty with it. So the idea of swapping or having to change a battery at two years is just absolutely ludicrous. The battery now is still the original battery. It's nine years old. We're running at the moment on about 90,000 miles. And I recently had it tested and it still has 90% of the useful life left in it. And that means today it has a useful actual real world range of 250 miles. So this still has a good four, five, six, eight years life left in it. So no, batteries do not need replacing after two years. And most batteries with an EV will come with an eight year warranty. So if ever a battery did need replacing, it would always be within the warranty. For the safety conscious, are EVs more at risk of catching fire? The answer to that is no. In the early days of EVs, there were no batteries that were built and designed specifically for EVs. And so the EV makers had to use what was available, which were the lithium ion batteries that were designed for power tools and um, computers, laptops, and the like. And they were not best suited for use in a high power application like uh, an EV. And so with less understanding of what they were capable of or how they performed, some of the manufacturers found that they were getting into difficulties and they were overheating. Some of the manufacturers realized this would happen and they built in battery management systems with heating and cooling. Some of them, for example, Nissan, didn't put anything in. And there were some examples of batteries overheating and that led to fires. But that was very quickly dealt with. And today, there are very, very few instances of battery fires amongst those manufacturers who looked after them properly. But even there, they are a fraction of the number of fires that occur with petrol vehicles every single year, just a tiny fraction. So you're much more likely to have a fire in a vehicle with a petrol tank than you are with an, a battery. That's all well and good, but when EVs do catch on fire, are they impossible to put out? 
Yeah, that's one of those lovely myths, and uh, it's spread around the world like wildfire. No, I shouldn't have said that, really. Um, the simple answer is that uh, all fires are difficult to put out. If you have a car on fire with a petrol tank in it, they're pretty difficult to put out if they explode. Um, there's been a lot of uh, development over the years, and now most fire brigades have uh, fire blankets for EV fires. And these are massive big blankets you just pull over the whole of the car. Uh, it totally smothers the fire. It stops any oxygen getting in. And that fire then is totally under control. It smoulders, burns away under the blanket. It is no risk to anyone else, not the firefighters, not anyone around it. They have temperature sensors inside, which will tell them what's going on underneath the blanket. And the fire crews literally just sit back and wait for that fire to die down. Uh, and it can take quite a while, but it is totally safe. And when the fire has died down, the blanket is removed, and then they take appropriate action to do it. And usually, at that point, the car's just a total write-off, which it would be if you had a petrol tank that exploded. So, yes, uh, in the past, they were difficult to put out. You can't put them out with water, uh, but nowadays, the fire blankets are amazingly effective. Are EVs too heavy for the road? Well, short answer to that is definitely not. Uh, even this car, this is a big luxury car, and, and this is uh, nine years old now, so this should be one of the culprits. But I've noticed several Range Rovers driving past, and those are heavier than this on the road. So if it can take Range Rovers, it can take this one quite easily. We have a trend these days for bigger, heavier cars, the uh, BMW X8, the Audi Q8 and drivers seem to like bigger, heavier cars. Uh, so it's a trend we are going through. At the same time, in the EV world, they were at one point tending to be heavier than the petrol equivalent. But some of the batteries we're developing now have much more uh, energy density, which means they're putting in smaller battery packs, uh, which are lighter. So it's, it's, it's evolution, it's a changing world. And it's no longer strictly true to say that the EV is a heavier car than the petrol car. Um, I, I think we, as a, a motoring nation, need to get away from this idea that we have to drive these big, heavy cars and we ought to get into some of the smaller, lighter budget cars because if you look at most of the cars on the road around us there's only one sometimes two people in it and why do you need a big two and a half ton uh, seven seater car when there's only two people in it uh, so no they're not too heavy for the road with EVs being slightly heavier than regular cars and having much faster acceleration often more than some of the sports cars of old do they go through tyres too quickly? They, yeah, they can. Uh, but there again, people don't consider like for like. If you take something like a little Fiat or a little um, Dasher Spring and say, do EVs go through tyres faster than them? Of course they do, because they take about three days to get up to 60 mile an hour, whereas this one takes less than five seconds. And so this, if you use it, will go through tyres quicker. But if you compare this to a Lamborghini or a Ferrari, it will go through tyres no quicker whatsoever. So you have to compare like for like. If you drive this one sedately as if it was a Dasher Duster, then this will go through tires pretty much the same. The reason tires were is because either you do harsh acceleration, which wears them away as they try to get the grip on the road, or because you go careering round bends, which scrubs off the speed and scrubs off some of the material of the tyre. If you drive sedately in a straight line without harsh acceleration or braking, and you go round bends gently, these will use less tyre wear than someone in a Dasher um, Sandera who does go screaming round bends. So compare like for like, these use tyres no faster or slower than any other car.
Well, that brings us to the end of our rainy day adventures. I hope that you have all enjoyed uh, us addressing some of these EV myths, these concerns, these fears that people have around it. And hopefully it's put your mind at ease. And of course, as ever, if you vehemently disagree with everything that's been said, let us know where we've gone wrong. I'm Jonas. I'm Dave. Thank you for watching.